Okay, so the Mishnah said, Good morning, everyone. Kufman Beis, number Beis, 142b. Mot shall come now. If someone has money on top of a pillow, the ladder shake it off the pillow and they fall off. Okay. If someone forgot in a wallet, a similar case, and in the wallet there's money, in a chotzer, and now you're worried that that courtyard is not protected, and someone may come and steal it. You may place something upon, like a child, or a loaf of bread on it. Now we had this with a mace. We had this with a... So what type of heter is this? And now you're allowed to move it. And we know, we paskin, that Micham Litzel, remember Micham Litzel? Micham Litzel meant to protect your item of mukta. You can't move. But here suddenly, Pitom, surprise, the Bishu says that you're allowed to place a wallet, a, 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 a loaf of bread or a child on your money and move it. So what does this hetter come from? Um, the territory is because we're going to see soon. Omar Rav Yitzchak, Shochach lebeinah bechotzer meniach alayki kaitina kumatatla. If you forgot a brick in a chotzer, you could also put something that's not mukta on it and move it. Omar Rav Yehuda, Parashil Omar Rav Yasi pamacha shochachod disakia. They once forgot a leather bag filled with money. In the seratia means in the square. In the Rishut Arabim. And he told them, Now, you should put a little something that's not muksa on it. And move it. Okay, so now, what about carrying? So obviously, you're not, this whole hetter is only going to work for mukta with the right? But if it's not going to help you be over on melacha the right to carry four amot per shutarabim. So what he meant was walk two amot or three amot and stop. So you make an akira and hanocha less. So it's only an isa de rabbanan. So because a person is so frenzy and panicky on his money. You have to be able to give him some sort of heter so they relax the Issa de Rabbanan of carrying less than four amot in Rishut Rabim if you took care of the Issa Mukta as well. So, okay, so now you take care of the Issa Mukta and you're not going to be over the Issa de Raisa of carrying on Shabbat because you're going to go less than four amot. So it becomes Mutar. Okay, so basically, ba- basically, the, whenever there's a, a chance that a person is going to be bohol al mamoyna, he's going to be in a panic, and he might do something even worse. So they were, they suddenly they relaxed a lot of yisurim. If you made sure to only keep them to an Isra Rabbanon, then they made it mutter 100%. Omar Mazut, Hilchaz Kachlahani, Shmaitatam, Bishaycheach. All of these psakim are true, but only when you forget. But if you placed it in the area where it's in on purpose, then they never gave you this heter. Oh, I put it there on purpose, but now on Shabbat I want to move it. Too bad. Now you can't do it. It's only if you figure out it. Ravashi Omer, Afilu Shochach Nami Loi Vili Omer Kikar Yitinik Al Lameis Pulfad. Ravashi says nothing doing. All these halachis are not true, and they only said this halacha for a mace because of kavod abriot. They don't want the, the mate to die. Okay, and therefore, any time it's an issue of just muktzah, um, You don't have this heter. Abaya Hold 
Hold on one second. Fine. Abaye monach kapo akipi. He used to put on the kipi a spoon on all the piles of tvua so that he could move them if they were in danger. Rav Manach Sakino Abar Yoino, he would put a knife on, on, on mukta meat of a fowl, of a yona, of a dove. Metaltala. Om Rav Yosef Kama Kharifa Shmaita the Dadaki. <laughs> they're so sharp these youngsters are so sharp meaning he's saying a little bit like sarcastic almost he's saying these young youngsters young sharp people you know like youngsters are always very sharp but see, he's like talking a little too sharp but they're, they're, as far as not good when did the Chacharim that we said before Say that you're allowed to save your muktza item if it's in danger of being lost because you're worried about your money and therefore they relax the instead of muktza if you place something on it. That's a very special heter. That heter is only said if you forgot it. But if you knew about it, l'chatchilo, you could just take all muktza and do your thing. <coughs> okay. Can't do such a thing. L'chatchila, to do such a thing. Now, why? Because Rabbi Yosef understood that what Abayah was doing, um, they said, no problem. So, what we're up to, Kufman Beis, on Beis, 142b. Not too long ago. Sorry. Well, yeah. You good? Great. No, we're still, we're still on the p- page before, I think. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, fine. So the Gemara says, Om Rabaye, ilav da odom chosh vano, kapa kipi lomli. If not for the fact that I was an odom choshuv, why would I have to put a spoon on the oymim? Chosu lebiz galaya. They're, they're, they're fitting to be to, to lie on them. Meaning to say, since I'm a chosh of a person, I'm machmer on myself. And I consider them muktzah. Because I'm worried that people might think that they're muktzah. And when they see that I'm moving them, they'll think, oh, Abai doesn't care about muktzah. So if Abai doesn't care about muktzah, I don't need to care about muktzah. I saw the rabbi using muktzah. But there, so therefore, you know, what I'm do, you know what I do? I put a thing on top, I put a spoon on top, and I move it. So that when people see me moving, they say, ah, he had to do it with some sort of heter. So, the, so, so he's very careful about muktzah. The rabbi is very careful about muktzah. But the truth is, is Abaya, you're, you're bothering me that there's no heter to put the spoon on top because it's, it's, it's a problem of muktzah, you don't have that heter. Says Abaya, it's not true. They're not muktzah in the first place. I'm making pretender muktzah. So I make up this quasi heter which I know doesn't really work for real muktzah. But it's not muktzah in the first place. I just want to make it look like I'm doing a whole thing so people shouldn't come to learn from me. Okay? Um, says the Gemara, Oh my Rav, I know you love the Adam Chashem, no sakina bar yoyin alomni, hachazi li lomza. All the same thing, dove flesh, dove meat. That's raw. I can eat it raw. This is sushi. It's not muktzah. So why do I put a knife on it to move it? Because people don't know that it's not muktzah. People are going to see me. They're going to say, oh, the rabbi Rava, he's carrying muktzah. So therefore I put something on, I put a, a knife on top of it. So that when I move it, everybody says, oh, you see, how carefully you have to be a muktzah. But the truth is, I don't need anything for it. If had I needed a real heter, because it, had it been really muktzah, I would never have used this heter. Because it isn't a heter. I know you're tying on me. You're saying this is not a heter. You can only do it. Um, if you forget, and according to Ravashi at the end, you can only do it for a met. You're not even do it, even if you forget money. I know, says Rav. I'm only doing it because it's not really muktzah in the first place. 
says the Gemara, time the Chazil Umtzah, the Chazil Umtzah Loi. The Gemara is saying that Rav has said it's only because it was fitting to eat um, raw. But if it wasn't fitting to eat raw, even though I can feed it to my animals, it sounds like from Rav, Rav didn't say, oh, this is not really Muktzah anyways, because I can feed it to my animals. He said, because I can eat it raw, human consumption. Sounds like he holds that if something is only fit for animal consumption, okay, then um, if, if something is only fit for animal consumption, then it's still muktzah. So the Gemara says, That means he holds on Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda holds that something that is... <coughs> why, why would I consider something that's fit to be fed to my animals? Mukta. Why should there be such a shita? Why should we even... Why should we wonder about it? Why should it be... Why is the Gemara asking? Because there's a man the that holds that since something is fitting to be eaten by humans, therefore, it's not considered fitting to be... It's not fit for animals. Since it's fit for a higher purpose, so it's not fit for animals. And if... Okay? So, so th- therefore, dove meat, right? What are you going to do? Might to Shabbos. Make a good barbecue. So, since... It's flesh that's kosher. So therefore, what is it prepared for? It's really made for humans. So therefore, it's not made. It's not prepared for animals. That's why Rav said, the only reason why this is not mukta is because it's good for me. But if he wasn't able to eat it raw and could only eat it tonight, Motzei Shabbat, when he cooks it, then it would be 100% mukta. That's Rabbi Yehuda's shita. Because something that is mukhan le adam is not mukhan le balei chayim. Okay? So the Gemara says, but Rav doesn't hold like that. Amar Rav le tveli bar avzo, roast this duck for me, ushtei mei lushuno, and throw his intestines to the cat. Okay? Now, this is a yomtiv. Now, what happened to the intestines? The intestines are very, they are edible by, by people. People would eat them. But what happened was that once they shechted the whole thing, they didn't really need it. It's like the, the, stu- the stuff that's not so chashuv. So once they had a whole duck or a whole goose, whatever, they, whatever avos is, a duck or something? Duck or goose. Duck or goose, yeah, exactly. So what would they do? They would take the intestines and just throw it to the, throw it to the, um, to the cat. One second. At the beginning of Yom Tov, the intestine was ready for what? For human consumption. So now, now that it's not, now that you want to give it, um, now it should be mukta, right? It should be a problem, it should be mukta. So, and Rav has still allowed him to what? Now that it's not fitting for a person, he still allowed him to what? To move it. Must be that Rav holds that if something is allowed to be, is fit just now for animal consumption. Nobody's going to eat it besides animals. It's not muksa. So if that's Rav's reason, so why didn't Rav just say the reason why this meat, this dove meat flesh is not uh, a problem is because I can feed it to my dogs. Why did he have to say? Because I can eat it raw. That's the Gemara's kasha. It sounds like it's because it has to be fit for you. If it's only fit for animals, it's not going to be mukhan, it's going to be muktzah. Why? Because really it's something that could be eaten by a human after Shabbat. But you see clearly from Rav, it's not like that. So the Gemara says, no. Hosam kivan de misrach, really Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda's shita is that something that was prepared for man, if once it becomes not for man, and it only becomes for animals, it's muktza. Because it was never really prepared for this in the first place. And therefore it's muktza. And that's why Rav said the only reason why it's not muktza is because I can eat it. He had to maintain that. I, Rav said, 
move the intestines. Hasam kibin the misrach, since it's going to spoil and smell because they don't have refrigeration in those days. So by the end of Yom Tov, it's going to be the intestines will be bad. So therefore, yesterday already he had prepared in his mind that the intestines shall go to the cat. So he already designated them by Mashot, by the, the, the intestines will be only for the cat. He made it into animal food, and that's why it's not muktzah. But normally, if it started off being fit for human consumption, and now it's not, it's only fit for animal consumption, that's not considered prepared for animals. And not only that, says the Gemara, it is reasonable to assume that Rava goes like Rabbi Yehuda, because Rava expounded as follows. Isha, leistikones lebeisa eitzim, lito mehem ud. A lady should not enter the wood storage to take a little branch in order to stoke around the coals. Why? Because normal wood, normal wood is made for what? For firewood. And therefore, they weren't, and, and they were not made for what? To be used as a keli. And Rava says, that she can't use it. What do you mean? Who cares? But now she, she'll make it into a keli. So the ud she nishper also has to be yom tov. She must take the keli. And an ud, like right, a branch that was prepared before yom tov to become a keli, and it broke on yom tov. Also has to be yom tov. The machine, the fish, she must take the keli. Because they must take the shiva keli. Because you're only allowed to burn keli and not broken keli. Okay. Because if a keli breaks, an ud that you prepared before Yom Tif, a branch to become a keli, and now it broke, so now it's no lad. No lad means it turned from a keli into just a piece of firewood. So it's muktza. So therefore you're not allowed to burn muktza and benefit from the muktza. Shema Mino, from we, see, we see from Rava, the words over here that he holds like Rabbi Yehuda, in regards to muktza, that what? That once something was prepared for a specific purpose, um, then even if you figured out a new purpose for it on Shabbos, since it was never prepared for that purpose, you're not allowed to use it. That's what a Yehud Shita is. So the Mishnah Vaita. Now, Bishamay says. You're allowed to remove with your hands all the bones and peels from the table. And Beit Hillel is machmeh. They say you have to remove the whole board, okay, which is not mukta. And then you umenara and then you shake it off. But you may not um, move the actual mukta. Okay, we'll see about that more. Now, this seems to be like the Machlekes of Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda, if there's a lot of Mukta, or there's no Mukta. Rabbi Shimon is Matir in Mukta, and Rabbi Yehuda is very Machmir in Mukta. That's what seems to be, like, that's what seem, this Machlekes seems to be contingent on. Ma'avirin lefei ha-shulchan perun b'chus megzayis, v'seri shalafunin usar adoshim, v'tei shu machel behema. Aha. So you let her remove from the table all sorts of crumbs that are less than a kezayis, and seor shalafunin, some sort of bean or barley, I'm not sure exactly what it is, usara doshim, and little lentil beans also, even though people don't usually eat these, these things. Okay, because they are Michael behema. Aha, so suddenly now it's mutter. So we just spoke about svoig, a sponge, im yeshli orbe sachizo. If it has a handle made out of leather, you're allowed to wipe down the table even if it's wet. The imlav, but if it doesn't have a handle, you're not allowed to wipe down the table if it's wet because in it, 
inevitably he's going to while he's since he's wiping down the table his fingers will squeeze out some of the liquid and there'll be an Easter of Schita. Now some say if this Melacha is an Easter Schita of Dosh, like removing something of where it's encased, or others say it's a problem of Libun, of Kibus, because you are cleaning out the sponge. Part of the cleaning process is that what goes in comes out, and that cleans the sponge. You're getting rid of its contents, so you're cleaning the sponge. Okay? So, the Mechleikis, the Mechleikis, if, if it's Dosh, um, or not, is really a machlokes if what this mission is talking about. If there's oil in there, so you're not really cleaning it by squeezing it. But if it's water, so that could be an issue of kibbus. Um, and that's why they want to say that over here it's talking about an issue of dosh. Others say, no, the issue the Easter of kibbus is even with other liquids, not just water, and this Misha could be talking about that Isra also. Ben kachu, ben kach, it says, v'chacham oimrim, Tarashi doesn't have that. Whether it has a handle, whether it doesn't have a handle, you're allowed to move it when it's dry, ve'en mekabal, nitl b'shabis, you're allowed to move it, ve'en mekabal tumo, and it's not mekabal tumo, because a keli that's made out of, out of this material, out of sponge material, um, and it's considered a keli, and in regards to Shabbat, and it's going to be mukta, right? Still, is not a keli for Tumah, because it's not made out of the right ingredients that the Torah says. The Torah speaks about wood, a cloth, woven from goat hair, or metal. But not, none of these ingredients. Okay? Now, what are you, what, why are you allowed to move it on Shabbat? Isn't it Muktzah? It says, Ben Kechu Ben Nital B'Shabbat. So the answer is, you're allowed to move it on Shabbat, but it's really Muktzah. Why? Even when it's dry, it's Muktzah, because what, um, what is its main purpose? Its main purpose is to wipe down the table. And we're talking about even one that doesn't have a handle. It says, Ben Kechu Ben even the one that doesn't have a handle. So that would be muk. That would be muk to. You're not allowed to use that. So why are you allowed to move it? So the Torah says you're allowed to move it l'tzorich gufay or l'tzorich mekoymay. That's what the Mishnah means, because it's a keli shemalach to the iser. So the Gemara Omer Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman, on the way in Lanu Ela beishamik kel Yehuda, u beisil lekavishimoyin. The reason why there's machlokes if you're allowed to move the peels or not is because the machlokes is. Beishamay holds like a Yehuda, who is very machri and mukta. Beishamay holds like a Shimon. That what? So it means that he's turning around the Mishnah. Our Mishnah said that Beishamay said it's a problem. And Beishamay said it's not a problem. Excuse me. Our, our Mishnah said that Beishamay said it's not a problem. Beishamay said it's a problem. But Rav Nachman says we have the opposite. We have the Beishamay says that you're not allowed to, he's machmir. And Basil holds like a shimin, and he says, you're allowed to move it with your hands. And so it's, you have to switch around the shitot in the Mishnah. So the problem is like this, Rabbi that even if you want to switch it around and make Beit Hillel like Rabbi Shimon, because we pass him like Rabbi Shimon, why wouldn't Beit Hillel admit that this is a real serious problem of Muktza, even according to Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon holds a rack as Muktza, right? Even Rabbi Shimon, which is very lenient in Muktza, he holds a rack as, is, is okay. Uh, it's not okay, right? Because it's a Muktza Machas Gufay. What are you going to do with pits and peels? It's exactly like a rack. There's no purpose in them. So, Toysus wants, because of this Kasha, to learn that the cases over here about Tzomas and Klippin, not like Rashi, that they're rough and hard. They're talking about soft things. And they, since they're soft, they're, they're able to be fed to the animals. So Rabbi Huda holds, which is, which is the sheet of Beishamah, now that we turn it around, 
in our mission it would be Beis Hill, but we turn around to Beis Shammai, he says, no, that's Noilad. Because at the beginning of Shabbos, they were part and parcel of a food that was prepared for a person. Now they turn into animal food. Right? Now the peel is just left by itself. So it's animal food. So that's Nolad that just came. That, so he's very machmer. A Nolad. Shimon is mate. That is what Toysa says. Um, the Maiz, it's a very strong kasha on Rashi. How can Rashi learn that it's mamish hard peels and pits and say that if Shimon doesn't hold them? So, so what the Achorinim want to say that what Rashi holds is that the reason why it's mutter, even though it's hundred percent muktzu machas gufoi, is because it's most, because it's repulsive. So muktzu machas mius is a machloikis between a Yehud and a Shimon. Um, that what their their shimon's going to hold that since it's disgusting so they were mad there. and that's what the gemara is coming out of here that be still goes like a shimon so that for it makes sense even according to rashi you're allowed to move from you're allowed to move perurin crumbs from the table it says the gemara be sayel the rabbi yechon the amr rabbi yechon perurin shame him because i also have the biyat now this works it says you remove, you don't just throw them off. Okay? It doesn't say you throw off the, just brush them off. It says you remove them. Why? Because the B'yoychanan holds that crumbs that are less than a kezayis, and we had this Gemara, you're not allowed to just throw them out. Um... Uh, there's, a, there's a big tumult over here also because the Gemara really in, in Brachas came out that Rabbi Yechen never said that Rabbi Yechen said it's mutar. So what's the raya? The whole proof is that it doesn't say you throw out the crumbs. It says you remove them nicely. But Rabbi Yechen never really said that in brach, Brachot. So what's, what does the Gemara mean over here? Rabbi Yechen and the Gemara came out. He said mutar. If they're less than a kazayit, you're allowed to get rid of them. Only a kazayit. So what's the Gemara talking about over here? So they want to say that Rashi holds like this. When the Gemara in Brachot said, you're allowed to get rid of crumbs that are less than a kazayit, it means if you put water on them, and then they just like melt away, whatever. But there is still an Isra for Rabbi Yechonah to take crumbs less than a kazayit and throw them on the floor because people will then walk on them and that causes people to become chas shalom poor. Okay? So... Um, you can throw away crumbs, I know, less than a kazayit. Yes, you could, but don't throw them on the floor. Oh. Remove them. Some people have a minute, they eat them, right? Brings uh, wealth or something. A guy in my house, the Shabbos, he, I asked my kids like to eat the crumbs. There's some rabbis also, they ate the crumbs, you know. So, the guest was like, I'm like, who wants crumbs? I was talking to my kids, and the guest was like, me. You get wealthy from it. I was like, I was feeding the guy crumbs. All right, fine. Say, I shall have fun in money, money. Okay, these, all these things, you, the, the Gemara said, the Mishnah said, all these types of uh, little beans and stuff that people don't usually eat and crumbs, you let her remove them from the table. Why? Because they're Michael Behema. Mani, who's that? Reb Shimon, the Leslie Mukta. Why? Because he holds that the Chachomim did not make much Mukta. They didn't make so many cases of Mukta. And therefore, what happened over here? You had something that you were eating, and now you're left with little bits and pieces that you're going to give to the animals. That's no land. So it became, it evolved into a new thing. So the Mishnah says you're allowed to move it. Aha, so that means he doesn't hold of no land. Whose shita is that you don't hold of Noilat? That's Reb Shimon. Okay? Amos Sefer, now take a look at the Sefer. If the sponge has handle, you can, you can move it. 
and you can wipe with it. If it doesn't have a handle, inevitably, you're going to be over on Yehuda, the Omed of Hashem is You better tell me the answer to this kasha, everybody say. It's going to be like the ninth time in the Masechta. So the Gemara is saying, the Sefer doesn't go like Rabbi Shimon, the Sefer goes like Rabbi Yehuda. Because it says that you're not allowed to take a sponge that doesn't have a handle and wipe down the table. Why not? Because it, what's going to happen is you might come to, um, to squeeze. Yeah, but uh, is that what you want? Or are you just trying to wipe down the table? You're just trying to wipe down the table. You're not trying to get the stuff to come out of your... your sque- it's just what happens. Some stuff might come out. So the question is... Um, According to Rabbi Shimon, if you don't have intention, it should be mutar. So obviously the Mishnah is going according to Rabbi Yehuda. And now the beginning of the Mishnah was going according to Rabbi Shimon that didn't hold the books of Nolad. So what, what is this Mishnah? Who is this Mishnah? So the Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon is mate because it's, a, it's inevitable. Okay? Here it's inevitable. Because it's for sure going to come out. You're for sure going to squeeze it. Okay. So the Gemara says now. Hani Galin the Tamri Aramiyata. These pits, date pits, which ones? From the Armiyim, from Aram. Sharul Tal Tulinu, you'll have to move them Hoyul Khazin Agavimar. Since at the beginning of Shabbat, their mother, who's their mother, the actual date, they were fit. They're very, very like inferior type of dates. Okay, so what would they feed you know who they would feed these dates to? Animals. So therefore, at the beginning of Shabbat, these pits were already part of, like, they were set aside in your mind that you could feed your, your cows or your animals with them. So therefore, now that they came apart from the dates, the, pits? the whole thing, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't pit it for the animal, the animal just bit it up. So therefore, the fact that it came out now is not nolad. See, even according to Rabbi Yehuda that says it's a problem of nolad on Shabbat, it looks at something, it evolves and it becomes a new thing. This, was always okay. Because they were, they were, they were mutter at the beginning of Shabbos, they would be fed to the animals. With the fast, the But the Persian dates, oh, that according to Yehuda will be no lot. That's a problem. Why? Because at the onset of Shabbat, they were part of a fruit. And therefore, a fruit that was made for human consumption. And now, you, they change their address. Now that they come out, they're not part of a fruit that's going to a human mouth. Now they become animal fodder. So suddenly they changed identity. If you would speak to that pit at the beginning of Shabbos, and he would have a, a mouth, he would say, Who are you? I am the pit of the date that is going into the people's mouths. So he's part of a fruit that goes... So he's prepared for people. Now maybe the people throw him out. Now that the person spits him out, now he's, you would speak to him, he would have a new identity, a new hat. Who are you? I'm going to the animals. So therefore, it's no lot that will be a problem according to Yehuda. Shmuel Matatlu Agav Rifta. Um, Shmuel would, would, would move the pit. Agav the pot. Meaning he would spit out the pit and he would put it on a piece of bread and then he would move it. Now, what's he doing exactly? The emiss is that Shmuel, the Rishonim say, he holds like Rabbi Shimon and there's no problem of Noilad anyways. And he held, you let him move it with your hands. But he was machmer on himself because, because he was an Odom Choshuv. So he wanted to be like the stories that we had before with Abai and Rav. Okay, Shanam Shapaz Siman. How do you remember those? Abiroim, Shmuel, Rabo, Rav Huna, Reza Rav Shur, Ameymar, Rav Sheshes, 
and Rav Popo and Rav Zechariah ben Avkulis. Okay? Shmuel is the one we just did. Now we're going to have more. Shmuel and Tamei Dome, Shmuel, Oisar Adam, Kol Tzorka, Bepas. And Shmuel holds that you're allowed to use bread for anything. Meaning, there's a new issue here, but nothing to do with Shabbat. Baal Tashchit, Bizayon Apat. It's an Isser um, to ruin bread. Because it's a Bizayon for Pas. So now he's ruining the bread by putting all these pits on it. So the Territ says Shmuel holds it as long as you use the pass for anything that you need, that's okay. Rava would move the pits by putting them into a bowl of water. Then he would move it. He would gather them all in front of him until it was a whole pile of pits that became actually repulsive. Once it became repulsive, it becomes like a graf sharei that gets a head to the, you let him move it away. And he took it with his hands. And he would give it to the animals. Are you allowed to create a graf sharei? I mean, you have something that's not so repulsive. So I'll make it more repulsive by adding more to it, so then I'll get a head there. You're not allowed to do that lichatchilo. You're not allowed to bring that on, initiate that. So the answer is, the answer is, the answer is, what he did was, uh, so Gemara is not answering that. Gemara is a- arguing with what he just did. Right? So now, we see now that Rav Sheshes didn't do that. Rav Sheshes is a He would spit out over the table. Rav Papa is a Okay? Um, and Rav Papa would like throw them out of his mouth, spit them out behind the bed, so people shouldn't see them. He would turn his head around and spit them behind the bed. This is the famous Rav Tzchayi ben Avkulos, by the way. You know Rav Tzchayi ben Avkulos? Mishum am v'sunosu yishu Rav Tzchayi ben Avkulos hichiv b'teinu. No, it's not the Gemara and Gittin, but Matziya. Because of his humility, the, the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. Because by the story of Kamsa by Kamsa, wasn't it Reb Tzchayim and Avkulis? That uh, You know the story of Kamsa by Kamsa? Yeah? So then the, he said to the king, send, he wanted to show that they don't, they don't bring the carbon of the king, so he said, send the carbon. And then he made a mum in the carbon, and he knew that they wouldn't accept it. So the Chachamim wanted to bring it because of Shleim and Malchut, because they knew that this could be, bring problems. So they had a head to bring it. And then he started saying, no, but maybe people are going to learn from that, and they're going to say, that you're, not, you're allowed to bring such a carbon. And he kept knocking out their head there. It's a big shy of what, so he, he didn't know that this is going to happen. But that's what the Gemara says there. It needs an explanation. That's the, this is the, of Shayim and of Kulis, whenever you see it, it brings back memories of the Churban Beis Amidur. Okay. Hadun Ananoch Noitil Odom Es Benoi. Interesting. We're learning it in Vav Av, Pschayim, and Avkulos. Hadron Aloch should return to us. Noitel Odom Es Benoi. Hashem should take back his son. Should pick up his son. It's good? <laughs> nice, nice little. Uh, okay. So now the Mishnah says like this. Chavich Shenish Bira Matzilin Hemenam Ezon Shelo Shudot. If you have a barrel that breaks. So we don't want people, just like by the fire, we don't want people saving all their wine. Why? Because if you do, you're going to start getting a lot of different cups and things and bowls and you're going to be in a panic because your ba- barrel of wine is maybe worth $1,000, right? Every bottle is worth $50. It's a very good wine. And how many barrels could you get out of a, how many bottles could you get out of a barrel? Many. It's a big barrel of wine. So people, it was very expensive wine in those days, very chosh People get panicky with money, just like by the fires. So the Chacham said, listen, if we just allow you to save, you know what you're going to do? You're just going to go crazy, and you're going to say, bring, bring, let's go, let's go. The thing is, all my, my wealth is going. And you're going to carry through the Rishut HaRabim. Another issue is you're going to come to fix the barrel in the middle, because you have to fix it. So what they do, they said, you should know, there's a whole perek, a whole Mishnah, Halakha. You should know it now. You, you have a limited amount of things you can save. 
What? That means the rest of it has to go. I'm not allowed to save more? Yeah, you're not allowed to save more. So the second that my barrel cracks and, and there's a, it's starting to pour out, it's starting to like, you know, leak out nicely, and I know that within the next 10, 15 minutes I'm finished, I already resort to the fact I'm like, it's over. I lost this. I can only get for three suudot. By the way, three suudot, if you have to eat three suudot, if it's before three suudot, just like by the fire. If you say that we're allowed to call other people to come take uh, That's the next words in the Mishnah. Very good. You're allowed to call other people to come that they can also take for their suudot. And hopefully, they give it back to you. Right? Fine. That, that's what the Mishnah is about to say. But by limiting it to three suudot, and if you already ate one suudot, you only have two left, you have two. You have one, one. Right? Then, the person just deals with it in a very calm way and has to just basically... Accept the, Accept the fact, thank you, I was getting, I was, the words I was looking for, that he lost, he lost. And that way he won't get into a frenzy and a panic and he won't fix barrels and he won't bring Kalim across the Rishut HaRabim to, to save the stuff. So therefore they said, how much could you save? Mazon Shalosh Sudot. Wine that you need for three meals. Okay? Vilmer, and he could also say, L'acherim, Bo v'atzilu l'chem, u'v'vad shelo yispoig, as long as he doesn't put a sponge on the wine that's spilled. Why? Because if he, if he, let's say you have a lot of sponges there. And let's say it spills onto an area which is clean. Let's say onto a big table or I don't know where. To a count, I don't know where. So you'll just put a hundred sponges there. And then you have it all, all of them turn purple. <laughs> and then after Shabbat, you take, now I don't put any of that stuff there. Why? Maybe they had a big sponge that was able to take a lot in. A few bottles worth or whatever. They had all these sorts of rag. Don't do it. Because we're worried that you're going to go ahead and squeeze them back in on Shabbat, which is Easter of Schita. Ain't Now they're talking about Schita, the Mishnah goes on. Ain't so aperot mehen mashkin yatsu me'atzman You're not allowed to squeeze perot in order to Remove the juices. If they came out by themselves, they just oozed out. They were flowing out. Sometimes something is so juicy that it just starts to leak out the fruit itself. As to you're not allowed to drink it on Shabbat. Midra banan. Because we're worried that if you say, wow, did you taste these grapes are mamish? You have them in a bowl in your fridge. You come there and you see that they mamish. They were so luscious. They were so big. They started to just, all the, look at, look, it's on the bottom. All the grape juice. You take it out, put it into a cup, make a bore priya gaf. Ah, you drink it down. Now what's going to happen? Is I never had such good grape juice. Let's go get some more. And you might come to squeeze more grapes. Therefore, they said you're not allowed to drink that 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 that, that came out by itself. Yehuda Omer, Yehuda says not everything is asur. Depends. Im lo oichlin. If you put them into your, you you bought these fruits to eat. So you're not allowed to squeeze them. But whatever does come out, you can drink. Because we're not worried they're going to say, oh, it's so delicious, let's squeeze the rest. Because you didn't buy it for that purpose, you bought it to eat. Only if, in the mashkin, if you bought it to squeeze, to juice, then, even if it flows out a little bit, you're not allowed to drink it, because then you get so excited, you might juice it on Shabbat. Then I yotzeh v'hen astur. Okay? Now, by the way, there are two types of perot we're going to see in the Gemara. There are some that most, their main purpose, and that's till today, till today, right now, 2020, Tav Shin Their main purpose is to be squeezed and juiced. That's grapes and olives. 90% of the grapes in the world are squeezed for wine. A very small amount are eaten. Olives are the same thing. It's all about olive oil. Some are eaten. You know, we think we eat, you know, the Sarad a lot and Shabbat. It's a very little percent of the world. Most of it is for oil. Then there's things that most people don't, like, most people do not use for juicing. Let's say apples. Mostly are eaten. There is also apple juice in the world, but most of it is not about apple juice. Most of it is about eating apples, I would assume. Still, but since some people do juice them, so it's also going to be a problem. And... We're going to see which one's the right and not. Chalot vash. Let's continue now. Shariskan me'erev Shabbat. Yatsu me'atzman. 
Honeycombs. He already took the them off the off the uh, the beehive with his scanner. He crushed them on erev Shabbat. The Yatzu Me'atzman. After you crush them on erev Shabbat, now throughout the whole Shabbat they just keep flowing out their honeys. Asurin, you're not allowed to eat it. Rabbi Elazar Matir, Rabbi Elazar says you let it eat it because you already crushed them. So Rabbi Elazar is not worried that you're going to crush anymore. Um, the Chachamim, however, they had a problem with it. Why? Because they said if you're allowed to drink the honey or eat the honey that's flowing out of crushed honeycombs, then you're also going to eat the one of not crushed honeycombs. And that one you might come to crush to get more out of it. Now, isn't that Xero to Xero? Okay, so we'll see. It's like two Xero, two Drabanans, one on top of the other. Okay, so let's see. It says the Gemara, Tono, least we be yayin. You're not allowed to clean up your wine mess with sponges. Because you, lest he come to squeeze the sponge. And he's not allowed to clean with his hand, with, with oil, with his hand, with the shemen that's spilled, in order to bring it back into the keli. Because that's uvda duchel, which means if you have an oil spill on your table and you want to get, you're not allowed to go like this. Why? Because that's the derech of the choil, even though it's not a malacha, and that removes the sanctity of Shabbat. Okay, so this is, this is one of the things that's called uvda the that you're not allowed to do on Shabbat. Okay, now, depends what it is. Now you're going to say, one second. So when, when do I know if it's Uvda Dechol or not? What is the definitive uh, parameters of this Isur? Uh, maybe I can't sit on a couch. I can't eat with, with a fork because that's why I do it in the weekday. So it might remind me of a Wednesday. Where, is, where, is, where do you cut this thing? So... You, the Rambam says that most of them, we had this just two days ago, are melachos that you may come, or they look similar, or you may come to be over on Isra Um So the first din in the mission, uh, in this price over here is that you're not allowed to put uh, the sponges for wine. That's not this Uvda Dechoyl, that's because you might come to Srit. And the second one, you're not allowed to go with your hand, that's Uvda Dechoyl. Um, why? Not sure what, what exactly what issue you could come to, but there's some sort of issue. Ton Rabbonon. This spazuli peris mechotzim lakat al yad yad ve'echel. If a lot of fruits scattered in the chatzer, he could pick them up. Um, but he can't just pick them up and gather them all together and put them in a basket. He has to pick it up and eat. Avalu l'sei chasal, not into a basket, avalu l'sei chakupar, or to a box, shalu yasa kaderech shu oisa b'choyl, he shouldn't do like the way he does it in the chayl. Um, now, what exactly is so chayl about this? You're just picking things up from the ground, putting them into a basket. So, some learn that it's like an, a, a weekday act because like you're cleaning up, you know, you're, let's tidy up this place. That's what you do Erev Shabbat, you know. Clean up all the things, put them into a box. That's how some learn. Somebody showed him, the Rajbo. Um, others learn because we're talking about a case that there's offer and Avonim in the Chatzeris. So when you pick them up and you take them out of all the dirt, it looks, it looks like Bayer. It's not Bayer, but it looks... Kind of bird, so it looks weekdayish. Okay. Oma eight zoktim eilig gemar. Ain zoktim is a peris. You now let us squeeze the perot on Shabbat. And we had a machlokat in the Mishnah. According to Yehuda, you're allowed to drink anything that oozes out if you bought those fruits for eating purposes and not for drinking purposes. According to the Chachamim, there's an isu de rabbanan to drink 
even if you bought them for Achil. Omer Rabbi Yehuda Amr Shmuel. Moi doho Rabbi Yehuda lechachomim b'zeitim v'anavim. Rabbi Yehuda agreed that if, that there is an issu de Rabbanan, if it's olives or grapes that ooze out, then Rabbi Yehuda says the name Shmuel, even Rabbi Yehuda says that even if I bought the olives and grapes to eat and not to juice, my time will esrit and in the yov l'dayte. Kivan the esrit and in the yov l'dayte. Why? Because since that's their main purpose, even though that's not what he bought them for, okay? But when he sees it, it tastes so good, the oil is so good, he's like, I should have bought these to make oil. Because that's the normal thing, or I should have bought this to make grape juice. So then he'll really come, and even Rabbi Yehuda agrees, that you never, you never may drink grape juice that, that, was, that just came out by itself on Shabbat. The Ula Omar, but Ula says, no, in the name of Rav, Omar Rav, Cholokei Rabbi Yehuda, Af B'Zeitim Anavim. That Rabbi Yehuda was lenient, even by Zeitim Anavim, if you bought them for Achila, there's no problem. For Rabbi Yehuda, third opinion, Halachik Rabbi Yehuda B'Sha'a Peris, and Halachik Rabbi Yehuda B'Zeitim Anavim. That we pass in like Rabbi Yehuda by other Peris. But we don't pass in like Rabbi Yehuda in regards to Zeitim Anavim. Which means, it sounds like that Rabbi Yechon holds like Ula. Which means, he said, I agree with you, Ula, that there is a machloket even by Zaytan Van Avim. That's what Rabbi Yechon had to say. But we don't paskin like Rabbi Yehuda by Zaytan Van Avim. Which means, in Psaq Halacha, we're going to take Rabbi Yehuda partially. That means Rabbi Yehuda really himself held it all the way, like Ula said. But Halacha, Rabbi Yechon says, we only, he's going with the Ula. That there is a machloket even by Zaytim Vanavim, but we're not going to go like Rabbi Yehuda by Zaytim Vanavim. Okay? Omer Rabba, Omer Rabbi Yehuda. Omer Shmuel, Moidah Rabbi Yehuda, Lechachom by Zaytim Vanavim. O Moidah Lechachom Rabbi Yehuda, Bishar Perot. Hello, my plea, Omer Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Hello, my plea. Yehuda says the name of Shmuel. That Rabbi Yehuda was Moidah Lechachom by Zaytim Vanavim, right? That's what Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel before, that there's no machloket. And you know where the Chachamim are Moidah Rabbi Yehuda? They're all the other Perot. One second. So the Chachamim only were Machmir if it came out by Zaytim Vanavim. They're Moide by other Perot. And Behuda was only Mekel by other Perot. He was Machmir like the Chum. So they never argue. Everybody agrees by Zaytim Vanavim it's a problem. By other Perot it's Mutar. So Amr Leir Vim Yilar Ba'ava, Elo B'may Pligi, what are they arguing? Amr Leir Lichi Sishkach. Go work on it. And you figure it out. So the Gemara says, Amr Avnachem by Yitzchok. The machloikis is the middle type of fruit. The regular fruits that nobody squeezes, nobody juices, okay? Everyone agrees that you're allowed to drink the drinks, even though you could make juice out of it, but no one does. So therefore, you don't have to worry, as long as you bought them for Eichlin. And everyone agrees that by Zaytim Anavim, even if you bought them for Eichlin to eat, you're not allowed to drink it. Because it's so normally used for juicing, that's its normal thing, that you're going to come to juice it. So, where is the Machlaikas? By two severe money, by berries, strawberries, and um, pomegranates. Most people don't usually squeeze them. So, therefore, according to Yehuda, since the guy bought the berries and the pomegranates, for eating purposes, and most people don't usually make them into juices, so therefore eat, you could drink whatever comes out by itself, whatever flows out by itself. But according to the Chachamim, um, since there are some people that do sometimes juice these things, even though you bought it for the major, the purpose that, of you know what, of the majority of people, that you didn't you didn't think about that, but now that you taste it. And it's a normal thing to do. You might come and therefore they hold the inala to drink these drinks. The Tanya. Because you learn to the Brayta. Zaytim shemashach mehem shemem v'anavim shemashach mehem yayim. You know what? I think we should see this Brayta tomorrow. Okay? Chazak Baruch. We're going to see about this Brayta tomorrow.